Welcome back to the studio, it's Dean, and today we're looking at how to make a retro pop song. a pop song with retro vibes, instead of reaching for your synthesizer menu, I think a great place to start is the vintage electric piano menu. And depending on whether you're a GarageBand or Logic user, you'll have different options. One that I love and that I used for this song is the Wide Suitcase. And here's a little tip for coming up with keyboard parts. Instead of just playing block chords, See if you can add an extra flavor note here or there just to spice things up. Then after the keys, I moved on to my bass part. And if you know me in this channel, I love the Agile synth bass. You can find it by going to the synthesizer menu bass. It's the top option. And I, a lot of times, will turn on what's called the arpeggiator, which causes the bass to thump like this. Since this is a retro vibe song, what I did was I actually made the velocity of each note really, really low because if I turn it up, it crunches pretty hard. But I felt like for this song, the velocity should be low and soft. Then next, I moved on to my drum kit and I chose the trap door kit under the electronic drum kit menu. And there's nothing fancy about this performance. It's just kick, snare, and hi-hat. But one thing I did do to customize it a little bit was I added some master reverb to this drum track because I wanted it to fit in the space and the vibe of the song a bit better. So with three initial elements, this was a vibe. And I know I'm onto something good when I'm only three elements in, but it's really working. After that, it was time to add vocals to this verse. And you can see I have one lead line and one high harmony. And then in these emphasized phrases, I have the lead line, a high harmony, and a low harmony. Lord, you shine like the sun in his brilliance. On these vocals, I added some of the same master reverb as I added to my drum kit because I want everything to feel like it's in the same space. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail of how I mix vocals in this particular video because I already have another video all about mixing vocals. I'll put the link in the description. So with three musical elements and three vocals, this is what verse one sounded like. Lord, you shine like the sun in his brilliant soul. So after that, it was time to transition into the first chorus. And so the first thing I did was turn on a turn signal. I pulled back the bass and the drums to create a little cutout here to let your ear know that we're transitioning from the verse and into a new section, the chorus. So As we enter the chorus, I have this beat machine hit, which really releases some air and some energy into the chorus. You can find this under octave C2 on the letter H. And in context of the vocals, I also added an echo track for emphasis on the word light. Echo is a plugin that you can find under the delay menu. And I turned the repeat up really high so that we hear lots of repeats. And then I also turned the wet knob all the way up so that you can hear those repeats really well. So in context of the vocals, it sounds like this. I'm blinded by the light. So good. And then beyond that, with more vocals in the chorus, you can see that I have sections where I emphasize and I expand on my vocals, and then I go back down to one, and then I expand, and then I go back down to one. This creates an ebb and flow in your vocals that really helps things flow dynamically. In the third section of the chorus, I actually created a high octave track to mimic what my lead line is doing. And I 
did that by simply copying pasting my lead line into a duplicate track. Then I added the vocal transformer plugin. I pitched it up 12 semitones or one octave, and it creates this really cool effect and special emphasis on just this part of the chorus. <laughs> To finish out the chorus, I put a break, a cut right here where everything pauses for a second and then it comes back in. And after the break, I added one new element, the infinity pad, which you can find under the synthesizer menu, pad, go down halfway and you'll see infinity pad. And this pad is just beautiful and ethereal. So all together, this makes for a really moving transition. Next, it was time for verse two, where I created two more turn signals to help lead the listener's ears out of the chorus and into the next verse. The first thing I did was with my trap door kit. So how did I create this sound? Well, if I hit A on my typing keyboard, it brings up automation lanes, which allow you to do manual effects at any given point in your song. If I hit B on my typing keyboard, it brings up my signal chain for this drum kit. And you can see I actually added a vocal transformer plugin, but I didn't have it turn on at any point in the song except for right here. And what I did was I came to my automation menu. I went to vocal transformer. I selected formant, and then I created this manual little dip right here which creates this really unique and cool feeling of the pitch dropping on your drums. And since it felt a little bit like I was pulling the air out of the room with that trap door move, I added in a boom to release the air once verse two hits. And you can find these booms by going to your loops library and simply typing in boom. After the transition, I wanted verse two to step up dynamically from verse one, and so I did two things to do that. Number one, I added the third part harmony to the entire verse instead of just on the emphasis phrases. You radiate in your beautiful glory so and number two, I added an ad lib track to re emphasize the phrase that was sung here. So chorus two, and you can see in color what I had existing in chorus one, and then you can see in gray what I've added here in chorus two to help progress things dynamically. First, I started off with two pads, the breathy vox and the infinity pad, and together they sound like this. They're not taking over the mix, they're just adding some warmth and some texture behind the song. Next, melodically, I added another pad called the Outer Land Synth, and I went way up the keyboard to octave five to get this high, kind of ethereal sound. I love that. Next, it was time to build things out rhythmically, and so I duplicated my kick drum out of this trap door kit. I pasted it into the beat machine kit to add some extra emphasis and boom to the kick. After that, I also built on my snare by adding in a sample, and with that sample, I added some master reverb so it would fit in the space of the song. Lastly, for percussion, I added that boom in two different instances for added boom to the chorus. Then to finish off this chorus and move into the bridge, I used the Outer Land synth again to create this descending melody line that I absolutely love. show you with this is how to actually bend your synths. Of course, if you have a MIDI controller, you can use the pitch wheel to bend your synths. But if you don't have a MIDI controller, you can hit Command K, bring up your musical typing feature. And if you'll notice, numbers one and two on your keyboard are actually for pitch bending. 
so stinking cool. And I love the vibe that bending a synth brings to a song. So I'm gonna stop there because I feel like that's the main parts of the production that I can pass off to you. But if you wanna hear the full completed song in its entirety, then go check out my other YouTube channel, Presence Pop, where I release all of my original music. This has been Dean. Thanks for joining me in the studio today. And if you want to learn more from me about music production and mixing, then check out some links in the description. And I'll catch you in the next video. And yet you